Oh, I am so excited. We are really, really excited. We have a great STEM is family fun experiment for you today. First, let me introduce my amazing intern who's helping put all this together. Please welcome from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Monica Rivera Sosa. Hey, Monica, how are you? Good, Dad. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to get started on these awesome experiments. And we are really excited because we are teaming up with the folks at the amazing San Diego Children's Discovery Museum out in San Diego, California. And joining us right now is their director of education. I feel like so like important, like I'm going to the <laughs> office. Please welcome Whitney Racer. Hey, Whitney, how are you? Thanks for having us today. We're excited. I really am excited. STEM, or as you folks in California say, stream, science, mm -hmm. technology, reading, engineering, art. It's so exciting. It's so cool because I think kids really look forward to these things. It's a great way to engage kids in a lot of hands-on learning that um, integrates a lot of different subjects. So they're learning multiple things at the same time and making a lot of connections. Monica, you, you're still in school. So you, you know, I, I, I was in school a hundred years ago to me, being able to do things and touch things and like that interactive stuff. That's the way I really learn the best. What about you? Absolutely. I am definitely a learn as you do kind of person. Obviously it's good to have an observation and be able to see things, but working with your hands and getting to see and make mistakes um, in real time is really the best way to learn, at least for me. Yeah. Well, Whitney, you're going to teach us an experiment that we can do with our kids in our home. So um, why don't we get right to it? Awesome. So I'm so excited. Um, I get to do a hands-on experiment today. So just like you guys said, at the museum, we believe that kids learn best through hands-on, open-ended exploration. So we're going to get to do a little bit of simple chemistry today. Um, and so the items that we're going to use are things that are pretty easy to find around your house, and they're but they're really fun and have a really fun effect afterwards. Um, so we're going to use something called Rainbow Bridge. Um, and in this, we're going to watch a different chemical reaction um, so the items that people are going to need at home are going to be some paper towels. You don't need a whole roll like I have, but just one paper towel will do. Um, some clear glasses of water and then markers um, are really the biggest things that you need. Um, I'm going to also use a ruler to help me measure to make sure my paper towel is the right length. And I might have to trim it with scissors. So if you want, if you want to double check your paper towels, that's the only other material that you might need. But while we're watching this happen, I'm going to be asking you guys to do some different things. I'm going to ask you guys during the experiment to help me make a prediction or a hypothesis, which we like to say is a really smart guess. Um, so we're going to make some hypotheses or predictions to see what will happen. And then afterwards, we're going to think about maybe why it happened. And I'm going to see if you guys have any ideas before I share some of the really fun STEM behind what's actually going on. Does that sound good to you all? It sounds amazing. I'm probably going to get it all wrong, but I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> Well, that's part of science, right? You're getting it wrong and then trying again to see if you can get it right. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is we just need a paper towel. And when towel. you get it, so it's just um, one you're going to fold it towel. in it half like a hot dog. dog. Then you get to do, which is maybe arguably the most exciting part for many friends. You're going to use all of your colorful washable markers and you're just going to color the end like a rainbow. The very, very end tip of it. right on the end of my paper towel. Ooh. So the next thing that you're gonna do is make sure that your paper towel is about seven inches. If you don't have a ruler at home, you can use your thumb. Your thumb is about an inch long. So you can count seven times with your thumb or you can use a ruler like I have. And I have a little bit slightly shorter paper towel. And then you can do some more color. <laughs> you can take this and then you're gonna color a rainbow on the other side. just on the tips and edges of the paper towel. So it's not going to stretch all the way across. It's just on those bottom parts. And it's about one thumb length or one inch long for each little color that you've done. So we're about to start our experiment. But my question is going to be, what do you all think will happen if I put my paper towel into my two glasses of water? I'm going to go way out in a limb and I'm going to say the paper towel is going to get wet. Great idea. That could probably be true since they're going to be using some water. I think when the colors go into the water, that 
they're going to either like like spread on the paper towel maybe like start to like sp- like I don't know maybe go into the water and color the water we're gonna have to see does the color go into the water or does paper it spread towel. on the paper Those of you towel at home you're, you're gonna ready? arch your paper towel so it's the shape of a rainbow doesn't look like one yet so let's see if we can make it into a rainbow so we're gonna put one side into one part of the water and the other side into the other part of the water And I'm going to angle this just a little bit so you all can see some of what is starting to happen. So what is going on in our glasses? What do you notice? It's like defying gravity. It's yes. like flying. Yes. It's amazing. a rainbow. It's a rainbow. <laughs> so you all were right. So some of your predictions or your hypotheses are right. And Jed, I love how you said it's defying gravity because that's actually exactly the STEM concept that is happening here. Do you have any idea why the water is able to defy gravity? I was feeling good about myself. And now I'm going <laughs> to, I don't, I mean, other than the fact, maybe it's climbing up the, the paper towels. It's, it's like clinging to the fibers or something like that. Yes. That's exactly what's happening. This is something called capillary action. So the water is able to defy gravity. We're used to things falling down, right? Nothing can go up. It must come down. But in this instance, the water is able to defy the gravity because water is able to travel along really, really small, narrow passageways to defy gravity. And the paper towel is made out of plants. And the plants that are the plant parts that are used for the paper towel is called cellulose. And cellulose make really tiny little tubes, kind of like straws. And so the water is able to go up, 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 up into those tiny, tiny little cellulose tubes to create a rainbow effect and travel up and defy gravity to follow along the arch. Other kind of interesting thing that's happening um, is if you leave this over time, you'll start to notice that the water is sort of changing color also. So there's actually another stem effect happening here too. The rainbow is spreading out over the paper towel and we're having our arch but some of that water or some of that color is dripping into the water and that's another effect known as chromatography wow chromatography is the um, ability to sort of separate different liquids and substances to find out what makes one whole and so we're able to see sort of what are the different parts that were in that color marker coming out into the water so two different kind of stem reactions happening in just one really simple experiment like teeny weeny tubes in a paper towel that we can't see Yes, yes. So small, you would probably need a microscope to be able to see. But yeah, cellulose are, everything is made up of cells and the cells and plants are these cells, these fibers are made of cellulose. And so teeny tiny tubes that the water is able to travel up. Hey, Monica, I think whoever made this shirt must have done that thing with the water. <laughs> wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be cool to visit the um, San Diego Children's Discovery Museum? Whitney, if we were to go to the San Diego Children's Museum. What do you think is sort of what are some of your favorite exhibits? Um, some other cool stuff to find other than just these really, really cool experiments. At the museum, we believe that every child can discover their wildest dreams by doing lots of different hands-on activities throughout the day. Um, we actually have, though, the most exciting thing coming up is on July 22nd, we have our science and engineering night um, from 5 to 7 p.m. And there's going to be lots of these kinds of activities happening for um, friends and their grown-ups to experiment with. Try on, we're going to have the San Diego Wave women's soccer team coming, and they're going to talk about the physics of soccer. Our friends at Cal State San Marcos, they're going to bring out their canine unit, and we're going to get to talk about the science of scent with the dogs. Then we'll have a, a live sort of experimentation happening on stage with our friends at Mad Science to talk about the science of fire and ice. So we're super excited about that one. That's really cool. Hey, Whitney, where can people go? There's so much there. They, they're going to need a place to go to find out more about the museum. Absolutely. Our website is the best place at sdcdm.org, but people can definitely follow us online too um, at SDM uh, or sdcdm320 on Instagram or on Facebook. And we actually have free activities that we post all throughout the year, different hands-on science experiments like this that we really try to focus on easy um, experiments that you can do at home. We also have really fun videos and things that teachers, um, parents, caregivers can use to teach a lot of different STEM topics. That's amazing. Monica, this has been amazing, huh? This has been so cool. I actually do have a question about the experiment, if you don't mind. So when you take out the paper towel, will the color remain in that sort of, or will it like fade away, I guess? Great question. So one way is to try it out and you let it dry. The color those who want spoiler alert. Um, And it won't (laughs) sort of drift. 
So it'll stay within those cells and it won't drift back down. Some people, when they do this with paper towel or with paper, they let it dry and then it becomes their own sun catcher or something else that you can keep in your house and use in a lot of different ways. Hey, I want to challenge everybody to do your own experiment, videotape it, to take pictures of it, put it up on social media, tag us, the Reading With Your Kids podcast and the San Diego Children's Discovery Museum, and, and we'll check it out. Wait to see it. <laughs> had a great time doing a great STEM is Family Fun experiment with our friend Whitney Racer from the San Diego Children's Discovery Museum. Hey, thanks so much, Whitney. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> thanks, Monica. Thanks, Whitney.